do if you cannot afford private music lessons? Do you simply give up or try non-interactive alternatives like books, courses, YouTube videos? I will not waste your time and just tell you. No, that doesn't work. Or at least none of those will be able to substitute one-on-one -on -one lessons if you want decent results. If you truly cannot afford your local music teacher, which would be a preference, and I'll tell you why, but you can learn very well by taking online lessons from the overseas teachers. Now, I know you're doubtful if that can be a good option for you, and I'm sure you'll want to know all the pros and cons and the best websites to look for the teachers. I won't hide anything from you, and I will actually show you my favorite website and how to find the best teacher for your needs. It is an ultimate guide on how to find your best online teacher, why I believe it is an incredible alternative to in-person lessons, and if online lessons would be suitable for you. So get yourself a cup of coffee and get ready for a long ride. If you want to skip through some topics, the timestamps will be down there below. My name is Olga, your online music teacher. This video is sponsored exclusively by the like button right there on the bottom of the screen, so you might as well press it. Don't forget to curve your finger while you do that, because you know, I can't can't help it, I'm a piano teacher. Okay guys, for the time's sake, here is the structure. Pros and cons of online music lessons from overseas teachers for adults, and then I will touch on the lessons for kids, because it is a different story. Right after that, we'll go and choose the best teacher for you in real time. But first, here's how I came across this website and love this whole idea of having online lessons with overseas teachers. Some of you know that I teach piano, but I never sang because I never thought I could learn singing. Believe it or not, I got my diploma in piano performance and teaching from Ukraine. I've seen other musicians grow professionally, those who studied singing or other instruments, but this idea has never crossed my mind that you can actually learn to sing. I used to think that the students get selected by pure and exceptional talent and only if they are naturally gifted, only then they could learn and develop their voice. 10 years and two kids later, I was like, why don't I try learning how to sing? Come on, admit that you at least thought of something like that too. At that time, I had already moved to California from Ukraine. One local voice teacher invited me to accompany her singing at her student's recital to play piano for her. She had a ton of students and most of them sang popular music, but man, they all sang so good. I couldn't believe one teacher could produce so many great singers. That would just be not realistic, that they all initially were so gifted. It must be that they actually learned it. I thought if I could sing at the fraction of how great her average student was singing, I would already be so happy. At the end, she sang one aria from an opera, and that was amazing. It had been weeks after that recital, but I couldn't stop myself from thinking about it. I had a toddler and a newborn back then, and that voice teacher lived so far away. I couldn't just afford spending all the time driving there and also time for practicing. At that time, it was just too much of a commitment. But then I was realizing that I should have ideally started at least 10 years earlier for better opportunities. But each year procrastinating to start lessons was getting me only farther away from that. I was even questioning myself if I could even do that. But then something hit me. Because of the pandemic in 2020, I had to do online lessons with my own piano students myself. And honestly, it was incredible. With all the discomfort associated with online lessons, I saw more benefits from temporarily going online with my students. And I'm talking a whole year. They became more independent and alert. Instead of me pointing with my finger into the sheet music, in a way, spoon feeding them they had to become better sight readers themselves. They learned to better focus and be aware of the processes happening in their development. So if my young students managed to perform two full-blown online recitals during quarantine, why couldn't I take voice online lessons to save some time by not commuting and potentially getting a more flexible schedule? Long story short, I went online and started searching for online vocal lessons. The results I was coming across had suspiciously low prices, so I was like, what? This cannot be true. $10, $20 for a 60-minute long one-on-one -on -one lesson? It smells scammy, and I mean, I've had so many piano students who were transferring from those more affordable local teachers, and I had to fix their hands for months and sometimes even years before the student would be able to grow professionally again. So I was already sure that nothing cheap 
was worth the risk. But then I kept reading further and I found out that on that particular website, there are teachers from all over the world. They are oftentimes highly educated and experienced professionals that know your language and can teach in English. And the only reason why their lessons are so affordable is because of their country and location. I'm sure you've heard about the war in Ukraine, which is my homeland. So that you finally know where Ukraine is, I'm sure you'll be amazed to realize that for $20 an hour, you'll get a Ukrainian teacher of the same qualifications as you would have gotten one from the United States for at least $100 per hour. Let me repeat that again. Your local teacher who has never heard Evgeny Kissing performing Rachmaninoff concerto live will charge at least four times more than those teachers from that platform. I hope that clicks. There are multiple leading platforms when it comes to tutoring, but my favorite one is Preply or Preply, however you call it. And the reason is because it is initially known for being a platform to learn new languages. So there are tutors and students from all over the world. And because it is so widely known on the entire globe, it started to expand beyond just that. Now you can take all kinds of lessons there from language to programming to music to anything you can think of. It has become a culture of their tutors. They can teach fluently in English. It doesn't matter if your voice teacher is from Armenia. You'll be able to learn what the one has to offer in your own language. So now the price will often be the fraction of what you would have spent locally. And that doesn't mean underpaying tutors because they set the prices themselves and that is whatever they feel works for them to sustain them in their own country. Okay, let's say you yourself as an adult are considering taking online lessons. And by adult, all I mean that it is your own initiative to take music lessons and you pay for your lessons yourself. Nobody has to motivate you is just you and your passion. I don't care how old you are, you might be a 14 year old who earns some cash walking your neighbor's dog, or you could be a stay at home mom who feels guilty about breaking the bank to take local in person lessons. Whoever you are as an adult, what are the benefits of you taking rather online lessons? From Preply. As I already said, one of the big ones is being on the budget. If you truly cannot afford your local teacher at the time, but you want a highly qualified professional, you don't have to just dream about it and watch your youth fading away. You know very well. I don't have to tell you that with music, the earlier your start, the better. Even if you're 50, it's better than waiting until you're 60. If you're 80, it's better than well, you got an idea. And just in general, come on people, who cares? Throw away your insecurities and do whatever you've already wanted. Forget what everyone has to say about it. In Preply, you can schedule lessons anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours long, increasing by 15 minutes increments. By default, Preply will offer you to book a 60 minute long lesson, but you can change it from the drop down menu. A lot of those Preply teachers will have prices about $20 per 60 minutes. So if you are really on the budget, you can just keep having 30 minute long lessons with them. And please don't tell me that $40 per month is too much for weekly online one on one lessons with a qualified professional. I'm sure there will be at least one person in the comment section who will be like, don't listen to her, online lessons are bad. You should only take in-person lessons. But after the math I just showed you, how can you beat that deal if you're on the budget? One of the big reasons out there why you might opt in for online lessons is being hesitant to make a commitment to regular lessons. I'll explain. Most of your local private teachers or schools will have a contract that specifies a fixed monthly fee. And it doesn't matter if you will attend all or only two lessons per month. It is though completely understandable as a teacher who has a very good structure and updates students objectives regularly, organizes mutable recitals per year and really looks after the rating and quality pretty much always keeping that student in mind even after hours, advocating for that student like your own child doing all that extra work that nobody sees you are doing. That is a totally different story. You will most likely see that type of attention with your local teacher. And even then, not all of them are the same. You have to really interview them well and ask for their student recorded performances to assess them. Don't think that if you don't have any experience with music, you have no right to request extra details from your potential teacher. All these extra steps will never be viewed as an attempt to discredit the teacher. And if that teacher does get upset because you asked an extra question, 
run. You don't need that teacher. So if you're about to commit to regular music lessons, it is important that you choose the best suitable teacher for your child. But wait, Olga, you said you were talking about adults. Yep, that's exactly why I'm bringing it in here. Such a high level of commitment is very important for your child, but what if you as an adult cannot commit to regular lessons yourself? You know that you would have to miss a lesson here and there, and since usually the lessons are non-refundable if you're taking lessons from an established, reputable local teacher, you don't want to throw all this money away. As a mother who doesn't always have an opportunity to attend the lesson, I would just prefer to schedule them flexibly and cancel or reschedule lessons as needed. Now, some of you will go like, yeah, why would lessons ever be non-refundable? If that's you, let me know and I'll make another video on why teachers have that structure and you'll be amazed why you as a student would prefer that. You could also be one of those on the teacher's side who would judge the system like Preply that puts the online tutors in place where their lessons can be cancelled last minute, moved back and forth and scheduled anywhere throughout the day. And I'll tell you, as a teacher, we have to be either one or another, not a mix. Because think of it, if your students are from all over the globe and if you have a lot of them, there will always be last minute cancellations, reschedules, all kinds of mess happening, but you don't even have to communicate with them on that matter. The platform does everything for you as a teacher. You just have to show up regularly and there will always be students to teach. You'll be just fine as a teacher. That was a huge side note for those who might think I'm telling you to take advantage of those online teachers who charge very little while having to abide by that platform's strict rules. Trust me, it works for them to be in that mode. And if they keep doing it, they're pretty happy. You can have lessons with as many teachers on Preply as you want. You don't have to commit to weekly lessons. You don't have to feel bad if you want to switch teachers. Nothing should feel like a burden to you while taking online lessons. Maybe you're a stay-at-home mom and you know your child is napping from 1 to 3 p.m. You schedule that lesson, put that kid to bed, brew a cup of coffee and enjoy having your $20 60-minute long lesson with a master's graduate teacher. With over 10 years of experience, how much do you think you would have paid for that locally? Or say you're a college student, perhaps even working evenings to sustain yourself. Because there are teachers from all over the time zones, it is incredibly easy to find the right candidate who can teach you pretty much any time. I personally only had mornings at 8 a.m. and evenings at 10 p.m. available for lessons. Your local teachers will never give you those. But guess what? Teachers from Italy, Ukraine, Russia, they are absolutely fine doing those slots. Oh, and especially if you are a music major student and need that extra lesson to boost your skills and you don't want to break the bank, imagine an extra 30-minute lesson every week throughout college. Can you imagine how far ahead of your peers you are gonna be? That's how you cheat the competition in the 21st century, dear. I would say this platform is perfect for every teacher around the globe, but especially for highly qualified established teachers overseas. I would personally not teach on Preply living in California because again, I'm in a different mode with all the contracts and all the commitment. I can't help it. But I'll tell you, when I was just starting out teaching here, I just wanted to get my foot in the door and I charge very little. As a new teacher, you don't have right away a whole bunch of students coming that first semester. If I knew about Preply before, I would have signed up as a teacher there when I was just starting out to get more students initially. So even if you are in the United States or Canada, instead of flipping burgers for minimum wage, you can also try teaching on Preply to get that experience going and it will still be more sustainable than those jobs. Don't be afraid of the competition because of all of those overseas teachers, some people would still prefer their tutor without an accent. And I've seen a lot of American teachers there too. That's perfectly fine. And here's where you can shine. So whether you are wanting to take online lessons or you want to try tutoring yourself on that platform, I'll leave the two appropriate links in the description that will help you do that. Those are referral links and it means that you'll get some sort of freebie depending on the current deal. Make sure to use one of those because if you directly go to the website, they will not offer it. It's not in any way sponsored. Those are just the links that I stole from my own Preply account. I think at the time it's something like 50% off your first lesson if you're signing up as a student. So if you found the profile of the teacher you think you might like that charges $50 per lesson, and I'll tell you that would be a very fancy one for that price. 
on that platform. That first lesson will only cost you $25 with a 50% off and you don't have to continue with that teacher if you decide not to. I would schedule an initial consultation with multiple teachers to see who would be the best fit. In fact, this is exactly what I did when taking my voice lessons. Before we jump to Preply, so that I can show you the tricks to find the best teachers for you, let's talk about online lessons for kids, when it's good and when it's not good. I want to start with something that most would consider disadvantages of online lessons. First, the teacher will not be able to physically correct the student's body posture, hand position and technique. Yes, as a piano teacher, we touch your kid. With a gentle tap, we fix his back. I might slightly touch the feet so that the student makes them straight, flat on the floor or the extender. I regularly touch and pretty much shape their hands like I'm working with clay. That's the most important part that you are paying for. The thing is, if I make the student consciously control every single one of those things, everything would fall apart. Learning an instrument is complex. There are so many processes that you have to operate. Figuring out sheet music, dynamics, the right feel, struggling with technique. Now, when you tell them and make your back straight, please, their mind would go completely blank at that moment. I also often play along with a student. I would ask them to play left hand while I would play the right hand and vice versa. If you're having online lessons, there would be latency, so you wouldn't be able to play in sync with your teacher. I was able to fix it, but it was very difficult to the teacher's part. What I did during the quarantine along with the student is I would start to count off and then play. When the student joins after the count off, on the student's side, it would sound the same normally, but I would have to struggle with a horrible latency. It would sound like a mess on my side, but I would keep going at the same tempo. And by looking at the student's hands on the screen, I would know if the one is playing the right thing. I didn't even tell the students it was such a struggle for me. That's how we managed to learn so many duets that pandemic year. It was definitely fun. So being able to physically adjust things would be the biggest reason why in-person lessons. Two, young students need parents to be present during online lessons because it's so difficult to concentrate when the kids don't have a real you in the same room with them. So as a parent, you have to perform that necessary physical contact that the teacher cannot make with them. In my studio, you would have to be always present during lessons as a parent, no matter what. You would have to be attentive and make notes. So if you're my student's parent, then I guess disregard that point. You would have to be present during your local lessons anyways. Number three, lesson quality could suffer if one of you has poor internet connection. I think there is nothing else to explain here. If you have lags during your lesson, you are missing out on that time. Number four, not always though, but usually your local teacher has a better instrument. So you would be at least playing on a good piano once a week if you were to take in-person lessons with your local teacher. But that issue can easily be addressed by exploring better piano options on a budget. So if you are a piano player, I will redirect you to my other video on how to choose a good piano on a budget. But for now, that's all the cons of online lessons for kids. And instead of just listing all the pros, I'll share with you why I would take online lessons for my children. Surprised? I have two toddlers. Here's what I'm thinking I'm gonna do once they start piano lessons. No, I'm not gonna be their teacher, even though I teach piano. I'm planning to make a video on why you shouldn't be your child's music teacher if you teach piano. And if I have enough people requesting it, it will be hanging right here. Instead, I will choose the best local teacher that is right for us, not generally the best teacher, but whoever is the best and matched my music philosophy. That's going to be the teacher that we drive to for lessons once a week. I don't really have much extra cash, but I highly value my kids' education. And when it comes to music, I'm not going to be particularly on the budget. I'd rather save somewhere else. So on top of their future local piano teacher, I will of course help them do their homework. But since I also work and I don't want them to have too much extra time when I'm busy, which translates to screen time to most kids, I will instead just go to Preply and book occasional lessons with other music teachers to keep them on top of their assignments. It will be very affordable and that will not be limited to piano lessons only. You're not gonna fly too high with one lesson per week and your teacher will have to somehow focus on the technique, 
but also allocate time to music theory, ear training or solfege, maybe composition or improvisation, making arrangements, music history. OMG, there is so much more that goes beyond just traditional piano lessons. You don't have to do everything, but if your local teacher costs $50 per 30 minutes, which is pretty standard in my area, it can be more, then why wouldn't I spend $20 for two lessons just like that one online that will teach them so much more? If you are also a parent and if you think that I'm being nuts to spend so much money on my kids' music lessons, you might go ahead and destroy me in the comment section. Thank you for feeding the algorithm because I'm about to be harsh. If you're driving this, have this in your backyard or visit this place on the weekend and you don't invest in your kid like that. Never mind. I'm not gonna tell you what I think about you. Again, this is absolutely not necessary, but I personally would rather go strong with skill-based education in the beginning rather than make them do some unnecessary busy work like public schools do. I don't want to discourage anyone from taking online lessons at any point of time in their life, but our hands learn better when they are 5 to 12 years old and I would definitely take advantage of some of those little hands in my house. By the way, you can do that with anything else on Preply, writing, math, any other subject. And did I forget to tell you that those usually cost less than music lessons? Well, that's because we had to do much more work to get there. Don't be mad at me. Okay, enough talking. Let's go, I'll show you around in Preply. You can download their free app to navigate, but I recommend you open your browser, even if you are on your phone, because there will be more options available and you will actually see what I'm talking about. Here is the home page of Preply, what it looks like when you are already logged in to your account. From here on the top left, click on the Find Tutors, where it says I want to learn. Click on your desired subject from the drop-down menu. You can specify the price range, but I'll keep it as default, which is up to $40. You can definitely find more expensive lessons here from some very specific rare niche tutors, but that's the default rate range the website gives you when you just open up the search. I don't know, they probably don't want to scare you right away. And also keep in mind that is the price for 60 minutes long lessons. The first trial lesson should be no less than 60 minutes by their requirements. But after that, when you like the tutor and want to keep taking recurring lessons, you can choose to have instead 30 minute long lessons with the one. So whatever price you see on this platform, that's a default price for a 60 minute lesson. If you were planning to take 30 minute long lessons, all those prices that you see will be cut in half after you select the teacher and choose the option to have shorter lessons. You can also choose the country where you want your teacher to be from. For for example, you want to learn Italian, you could prefer to have lessons with a native speaker and you'd be definitely better off looking for one who lives in Italy. For example, I know that Ukraine, Russia, maybe Moldova and Armenia, those countries usually produce the best pianists which could be pretty affordable. Again, don't be mad at me. <laughs> usually that's all the countries of the former Soviet Union because of the music education model and funding they provided and still provide to this day to all who wanted to take music lessons. I might make another video on that, but simply explained, instead of having one music lesson per week for the kids like it's usually seen in the other countries. People like me had more than 8 hours of music school per week from 6 to 15 years of age and that was pretty much paid for by the government. Parents only have to pay a little fraction of what it really costs. I'm so glad those schools still exist. I bet you some of those kids can teach and play better than an American college graduate. No offense. That's why I prefer teachers from the former Soviet Union countries. I'm not telling you that you should take lessons from 15 year olds, but you can imagine how highly educated are those people who have bachelor's or master's degrees in music from those specific countries. In my humble opinion, an American bachelor in music is not even slightly comparable to a bachelor from those countries. And I can definitely tell that living here in California. If I'd go for vocal lessons or especially opera voice lessons, I would try to shoot for an Italian tutor once again. My vocal teacher is Ukrainian, but she finished masters in Italy and came back to the Ukraine to continue her career in her homeland. That works too. I've talked a lot about the countries of origin of the tutors, but I'll give you another tip. 
if you're not picky at all about any particular country and you are really tight on the budget, you can just Google what are the most affordable countries to live in and then specify those countries in the search, in the Preply search. Now, another very cool trick is if you want the best tutor among those countries, you can further specify the algorithm to sort by price, high to low. Chances are you'll get the most experienced and qualified teachers within that country first. Okay, moving on. You can also specify your availability, but keep in mind that you'll get less tutors in search who offer very specific time slots. I recommend not specifying any time slots and just see what's out there first. As I have already mentioned, there is so many subjects to choose from. Look at this list. You'll be amazed by what you might see there. Let's choose the music category. You want to select speaks English. Usually when a tutor can fluently teach in English, that will cost you a little more. But if there are some of you who migrated to an English speaking country, but whose native language is not English, those could choose a teacher who speaks their own language. And that's where we have a privilege. I know so many Slavic people who immigrated to the United States, had kids, and now they are trying to preserve their native language. Well, guess what? That's two benefits in one. I will hire a lot of Russian speaking tutors for various subjects for my kids so that they will boost their knowledge in subject areas. And on top of that, they will learn Russian better. Double kill. Let's choose a more specific specialty, which is piano. And here are the tutors to choose from. Do you see that little flag of the country they live in? It will also specify how many active students those tutors have or how many lessons in total they had. Before you even click on their profile, you can see from the first line of their resume what they teach and what qualifications they have. If you have specific questions, you can message them before even booking a lesson. Just know that most of them will respond whenever they wake up because of the different time zones. Let's look at Irina, for example. I personally know that Glear Kiev Municipal Academy of Music is a very reputable and highly ranked conservatory in Ukraine. International Competitions Prize winner. Hmm, tell me no more. I know who you are. Ask that person to perform something for you at your first lesson. Your jaw will break a table, I'm telling you. By the way, I don't know her. There is just no doubt she's an incredible pianist. I'm just telling you how to look for the best piano teachers. And you'd have to see if your personalities match or if you like a particular style of teaching of that person. Let's open her profile. It says she speaks English, but then it specifies what her level is. For those who don't know, it is a commonly used grading system. It starts with A1, A2, then B1, B2, and then C1, C2, C2 being the best level possible. I don't know if tutors can cheat, but I found those to be pretty accurate when I was taking lessons from here. So if she has B2, that probably means it could be a little more challenging than if she spoke English fluently. But with music, I don't think it matters too much. It could be understandable enough. Especially with music, you replicate a lot of stuff rather than trying to understand it from her words. If you scroll down, you can see her schedule. Click on view full schedule and you will be able to see what she has available. If you don't see the desirable time, you could still try messaging tutors. Perhaps they will work it out for you, but don't be ridiculous. If you want 3 p.m. because of the different time zones, chances are they are sleeping. If you click on the time slot that you like, Preply will prompt you to schedule the first initial lesson, which is 60 minutes by default. Again, you can have consecutive lessons with a tutor as short as 30 minutes or as long as two hours. It's up to you later. They always have that annoying processing fee, what they call it, but whatever. It's like they already don't grab a chunk of tutor's pay. You can check the box. I want a free lesson or a refund if the tutor doesn't meet my needs. I recommend you do that because who knows, maybe something happens and the tutor will not show up or you truly got the wrong tutor. Choose wisely. So here are the credentials. I don't know how Preply does this, but it says her diploma is verified. Then it is followed by the subjects she teaches, piano, music history, music theory. 
Sounds good to me. If you look at the tutor's profile and it says, I teach music, English, math, art, dance classes, etc. Chances are this person is not good enough in any of those fields. Just a disclaimer, I don't particularly recommend this specific person. It is completely random. I don't even know her. I'm just telling you what to pay attention to. Okay, let's go back to search. Let's look at Roshan. Roshan charges less. He's from India and that explains it. He could also be a less qualified teacher, I don't know. In his profile he says he has been trained professionally for several years. That's not compelling enough for me. I think you'd be better off taking a 30 minute long lesson from the previous lady than a 60 minute long lesson with this tutor. I might be wrong. Or you know what? If a teacher from Preply would be your the only teacher, I would definitely choose someone like Irina, like the previous tutor. But if I have a local teacher for my kids who has a sophisticated plan and gives them assignments, I wouldn't mind even hiring someone like Roshan to drill on the concepts and make my kids practice when I'm busy. As simple as that. But even then, for that matter, since I wouldn't need a qualified tutor, I would shop for an even better price. Maybe $10 per hour? I'll show you how to find one. Keep watching. No offense to Roshan, you're awesome. Hmm, that's interesting. Look at this girl. She's from the Philippines. Philippines is one of the most affordable countries to live in. And in fact, that she charges $15 per hour says a lot about her qualifications. Preply will, of course, get a percentage of her pay, but that's expected. I would rather compare her to the first tutor from Ukraine that we looked at. Except I don't really know much about music education in the Philippines, but I know that they are incredibly honest and hardworking people generally. In fact, my awesome video editor JD is from the Philippines. Don't you think that I would edit this very long video on my own? You can also sort tutors by popularity and select your tutor that way. Or you can set the sort to be lowest price first. You'll see some tutors who charge $9 per hour. Now, this guy, Mohammed, he has some good reviews, so he might be an awesome personality and be a talented teacher. But let's click on his profile and scroll all the way down where he specifies his qualifications. He just says he has been teaching and playing guitar for five years. What does that mean? He began learning guitar and right after the same time he began teaching guitar? Or do I not understand something? It might be English writing issues, but what I think, he's most likely not a qualified teacher. And the fact that he wrote the teacher's guitar in the field that says piano is even more shady. Like in contrast to the previous lady from the Philippines, you would pay $6 more per hour and you would get a teacher who finished music conservatory. Yeah, they teach different instruments, but that doesn't ruin the comparison. Look at Johnny, for example. I don't know why, but I like his face for some reason. He seems to be very open, kind and patient guy. Before even reading anything about him, it feels like he would be awesome working with kids. But let's look closer at him. It says that his English is at C2, which is incredible. If that's true, it would make lessons flow much smoother in contrast to trying to figure out what your tutor meant if the one has very little English. Oh, okay, see, he's another conservatory graduate. His price is currently pretty low for what I see so far. So yeah, Johnny, raise your price. Okay, so he has five years of experience. That's not a whole lot, but just enough considering his education background. I learned solfege for 12 years and I'm teaching it to students in a funny and interactive way because it's important to know the basics of solfege while playing piano. Whoa, I like how he expresses his opinion as opposed to many other tutors who use a very soft language and overpromise too much just to get some students. At some time you become better figuring out if they're telling truth. I can help my students to understand the way that they are playing this instrument, not playing like a robot. <laughs> you know what? I can definitely see what he means here. In American culture it might sound a little harsh, but heck yeah, most students and teachers in America play like robots. <laughs> Um, restricted motions, stiff hands, lack of understanding of the actual story behind the musical piece, indifferent attitude. Obviously, what can you expect from one lesson per week? Oh, and I can already see people destroying me in the comment section, but 
Anyways, Johnny, I can definitely relate. Music lessons are often perceived as an activity, not a passion or a desirable skill to have and keep for life. That was a long one, but I can definitely see this person is not a scam. Oh, and by the way, you can watch intro videos of each of these tutors that they uploaded to their profile. I just don't do that for the time's sake. Let's experiment and sort by the highest price first. Adam lives in Europe and charges $82 per hour. Something tells me that he's much older now than in this picture. Maybe I'm wrong. He seems to be a very fancy guy in terms of his qualifications and experience. So I don't know, you might want to try someone like him. As you see, there are expensive lessons as well. Let me show you how I found my opera voice teacher here. And by the way, always check out links in the video description because I'll be updating you with the tutor's profiles for various subjects that I highly recommend. Leila is actually my voice teacher from Ukraine. It was clear she was the right fit for me. I didn't even read anything before I just listened to her singing in that video that she posted on her profile. Most of the tutors do an intro explaining what they teach and how it works, and she just posted the video of her performance. After I read her profile, it was clear she was very educated, had extensive experience in leading opera houses, and by all the reviews, she was highly praised by her students. She's a no joke and she perfects your sound in the ways she sees appropriate. I've taken consultations from about eight teachers that I preselected, and she was the one. In regards to voice tutors, you have to be really careful when reading their profiles. I would say it is ideal if they have their performance recorded, because if you like the style, the quality or the manner in which they perform, that's going to be the main criteria based on which you would make your selection. And that's true about any musician. I wish they were all recording their performances instead of just introducing themselves and then talking about this stuff everyone talks about. If you are a tutor from Preply, well, that's how you get lost in the pool of other tutors, just giving you some free marketing tips. I know this video is on how to find the best online music or piano teacher, but let me show you something wild here. Let's choose math as our subject for a second and let's select the sorting algorithm to show lessons starting at the lowest prices. Can you believe that there are tutors who charge literally two to three dollars for an hour teaching math? Well, you gotta again read carefully and make sure if they teach you that specific thing you want, not just simple arithmetics for kids. Speaking of kids, how affordable it actually is to have tutors for any subjects you need and taking into consideration such low prices, I believe the benefits of physically in-person lessons are greatly overestimated. Now, if you are the person who cannot tolerate a strong accent, you might only want to look at the tutors from English-speaking countries, but even there you can find pretty affordable options. One side note I want to take though, most of the time if you see what you consider a low price, that is primarily because they live in a country where the living is most affordable. That doesn't mean they are not good teachers, that doesn't mean they are not respected professionals in their field, please be very respectful of all of them. You can find some most expensive math teachers too, depending on their speciality. Let's say you needed an English teacher, you might specify one to be a native speaker, live in the United States and have the lowest prices. If this information was helpful, you might consider subscribing. On this channel, I post piano, music theory lectures and helpful tips by your request, just like this one. So if you need me to talk about a specific topic or answer any of your questions, drop them down there. Don't forget to grab your 50% off your first lesson with Adam, who charged $82. <laughs> just kidding, I don't even know him, any of them. But you got an idea. You could be watching this video years later, so something might change. I will be updating the links to everything in my description. And if you already did so, I'm sure you will find this video helpful. It was all good with you. Bye.